to follow this broadcast live on our website nta.ng slash live and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Now let's begin with news from South Korea where President Muhammad Buhari has expressed Nigeria's readiness to become a global hub for sustainable manufacturing and distribution of vaccine and biological pharmaceuticals in support of the far-reaching measures towards keeping all of mankind safe. Speaking at the first World Bio Summit in Seoul, South Korea, the president, however, made a case for speedy takeoff of the mRNA vaccine technology project, which he described as critical to global health security. State House correspondent Adam Osambo has the details. The summit with the theme, The Future of Vaccines and BioHealth, is jointly organized by the government of South Korea and the World Health Organization with hundreds of health experts and global enterprises in attendance. It provides a rare opportunity for productive engagement on ways to boost global cooperation in the development of vaccines in preparation for future pandemics reflecting on lessons learned from COVID-19. Already, the Republic of Korea is hosting WHO's first global training hub for biomanufacturing, which President Yoon suk Yul promised will be a game changer. We hope that this world-class training center will help to build crucial capacity in the production of vaccines and biologics in countries around the world. And Your Excellency President Buhari's presence will help in strengthening the uh, cooperation uh, between uh, high and low and middle income countries. I am confident that dynamic leaders like yourselves who are present here can catalyze partnership to take the future of vaccine and biohealth to soaring new heights. Let us work together to realize a better future for all. For President Mohamed Buhari, the summit most importantly opens up global conversation at high levels of government on measures that are expected to forestall recurrence of the unpleasant experiences that low and middle income countries in Africa and Asia in particular had to endure with regard to access to vaccine during the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 actually threatened and continues to threaten all of mankind with no regard for race, religion, or economic standing. We must step up as leaders in desperate need of healing and repair to begin to have the difficult conversations about a future which we must be better prepared for in order to avoid further devastation to our lives livelihoods and physical environment. The president who takes pride in the concerted efforts by the Nigerian government to mitigate the impact and curtail the spread of the virus on the nation's health systems described as welcoming the mRNA technology transfer project as a strategy towards increasing vaccine production capacity in underserved regions and thus promoting global health security. Nigeria is one of the six African countries selected to host the mRNA vaccine technology transfer hope to scale up the production and access to vaccines for COVID-19 and other diseases in the low and middle income countries. Nigeria is ready and able to offer itself for this initiative. So we shall continue to explore bilateral, multilateral and other opportunities for cutting-edge technology as a global hub for sustainable manufacturing and distribution of vaccine and biological pharmaceuticals to support initiatives to keep all of mankind safe. President Buhari said with the mRNA technology, diseases that have plagued sub-Saharan Africa and the third world countries for centuries, especially malaria, Ebola and lesser fever, would be addressed. We would like to urge for the speedy takeoff of this project in the interest of global health security. While pledging Nigeria's full commitment and support to the noble objectives of the Bio Summit, 
the president hopes that this courageous partnership will be sustained for the sake of mankind. From Seoul, South Korea, Adam Usambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has attributed the devastating effects of flooding being experienced in parts of the country to the negative fallout of climate change. This was while granting audience to the former United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on the sidelines of the first World Bio Summit in Seoul, South Korea. State House correspondent Adam Usambo reports. The former UN Secretary General, who is the chair of Ban Ki-moon Foundation for Better Future and strong advocate for climate change remediation, is here to sympathize with President Muhammad Buhari over the catastrophic flooding affecting most parts of Nigeria. He told the president that his Global Center on Adaptation is trying to mobilize resources to help developing countries fight climate change and urge donor countries to fulfill their financial commitments to the Global Fund. Mr. Ban Ki-moon thanked the president for attending the World Bio Summit, saying his presence would highlight the importance of global action and cooperation in the development of vaccines and technology to meet the huge threat and challenges of pandemics. President Buhari, who appreciated the former UN scribe for the show of sympathy, expressed delight with the cooperation existing between his country and the Republic of Korea, especially in the area of energy, citing gas exports to the Asian country. Describing education and healthcare development as critical investments for a sustainable future, the president and his guests also discussed the role of gender equality towards attaining a prosperous society and called for an end to the war in Ukraine. From Seoul, South Korea, Adam Musambo, NTA News. A total of 87 graduates at the 2022 National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies, University of Benin Convocation, have been implored to apply the knowledge acquired at the Institute to build a vibrant democracy in Nigeria in messages from the President of the Senate and Speaker House of Representatives at the 6th Convocation of the Institute. John Yaku reports. <laughs> The 2022 Convocation Ceremony is for the 2020-2021 academic session. 80 graduates are Masters in Legislative Studies, 19 Masters in Parliamentary Administration, 13 Masters in Law, Election and Party Politics, 18 Masters in Law, Legislative Drafting, 11 Postgraduate Diplomas in Elections and Party Management, as well as 6 higher National Diplomas in Official Reporting. The faculties and manpower that have been provided by the authorities are cutting edge and second to none. Today's convocation is a consolidation of the successes recorded in the past years. Our courses that are not readily available in higher institutions that means they are specialized courses. Former Speaker, House of Representatives, Dimeji Bankole, in a lecture titled Legislative Turnover. Implication for good governance harped on the need to elect and invest in legislators in a sustainable way to impact the nation given the cost implication. Maybe around 70 80 percent will not come back. At the local government level, almost 90 to 95 percent will not come back. So, all our investments in these people, mostly young people. The National Assembly agrees that nothing uplifts a nation more than education. We always to remember that the task of nation building succeeds through the dedicated efforts of citizens working in every capacity to ensure the nation lives up to its potential. The pillars between now and the elections, and uh, between the elections and the handing over in May 2023, are critical. Males and other leading democratic institutions are responsible for intervening postally to ensure the success of our elections. Here are the excitements of the graduates. I thank God that um, he has given me the ability to come tops in my class. Oh, I dedicate this victory to my family. The knowledge I have, the one that's impacted, will definitely be useful in and outside the NTA. Best graduating student. Congratulations. Congratulations. Abuja, John Yaku, 
NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government has identified sites for the development of more hydropower plants along the Benue River Basin and Niger River. Minister of Power Abubakar Aliu says this is in line with Nigeria's energy transition plan to diversify renewable energy towards achieving net zero gas emission. Joshua Ujito reports. Nigeria currently has four hydropower plants generating 2,380 megawatts of electricity to the national grid. For a country with huge hydropower potential, this resource is underutilized. The government is having a rethink set to take full advantage of this natural endowment. New sites for small, medium and large hydropower plants identified in Taraba, Adamawa, Benue, Anambra and Koji states with studies carried out. While the conversation continues among hydropower experts on the need to construct more dams for electricity generation, Minister of Power, Aubakar Aliu, who represented at the dialogue, says three new hydropower plants already completed and will soon be connected to the national grid. The government is, in recent times, is embarking on several hydropower projects which are at various levels of the government in order to harness hydro resources in the country. Among these are scaled 700 megawatts. This will be commissioned by the first quarter of 2023. The generation capacity in the country is low. So if we can take other sources of energy, things like solar, like biomass, and all that, and also add hydro, which is a major base load, it will be good for this country. Nigeria's energy transition at inclusive growth through renewable energy and hydropower generation is the theme of the conference. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Thank you, Joshua. Let's now join Adiola in the Center of Excellence for more on Nationwide. Over to you, Adiola. Thank you, Nadia Tun. Welcome to Lagos. Effective implementation of the recommendations by the NSAS Judicial Panel requires the establishment of independent human rights committee rather than place the responsibility on the shoulders of the Office of the Public Defender. Human rights lawyer Femi Falada stated this at a one-day public hearing organized by the Committee on Judiciary, Public Petitions, Human Rights and LASIC on a law to amend Office of the Public Defender Law 2015 in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports. The promise by the Lagos State government to implement the recommendations by the Justice Okuobi led panel on NSAS necessitated the move to amend the Office of Public Defender Law to accommodate Human Rights Committee in its fold. Human rights lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, however, argued that only an independent Human Rights Committee can help enforce the rights of those victims of NSAS as contained in the panel report. He also recommended that members of the armed forces should be included in the composition of the Human Rights Committee. It's important to have the armed, members of the armed forces, each of them, Nigeria Army, Nigeria Navy, Nigeria Air Force, very important, so that complaints can be taken to their own agency. Sometimes the police wants to arrest a soldier for violating human rights. It's difficult. Other stakeholders took turn to make their contributions. Human rights violation a greater dimension and um hope it is ready to take up the responsibility as um as long as we're equipped to do so this obd whatever can that human right the committee can become a commission later and little by little we are giving them that right when there is a when they are commissioned they are still having that they're, 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 they're still having that freedom to do whatever they want to do but on the guidance of the state because they need funding. The Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, Public Petitions and LASIEC promised to widen consultation and request memorandum from non-governmental organization on human rights protection on the OPD amendment bill. In Lagos, Musa Toliak, NTA News. 
Now, the Nigerian Army is awakening the leadership competency of its senior non-commissioned officers with a view to improve their tactical presence while operating in a joint environment. At the opening of a two-day workshop in Lagos, the General Officer Commanding 81 Division, Major General Obina Ajumwa, expressed optimism that the Leadership Awareness Development Course will provide solid platform for strengthening national security and defense. Michael Olaleye reports. One lesson the Nigerian Army has learned from its counterinsurgency operations is that where senior non-commissioned officers hold vital qualities to lead, communication will not only be seamless, but proper execution of operational mandates will be enhanced. I involved in administration. This leadership awareness development course is not just aimed at redirecting the minds of senior non-commissioned officers to the missing links, but motivates them on translating strategies to winnable tactics in any operation. Because it's expected uh, to bridge the gap between officers and senior NCOs. With 70 participants cutting across the Navy, Customs, Civil Defense and others, the General Officer Commanding 81 Division tasked the workshop to draw up acceptable procedures in achieving operational goals. Collaboration of this nature is very important for our joint operations. This can be achieved by upholding the command pillars of professionalism, readiness, administration and cooperation in steering the affairs of all our agencies. The course, organized by the Nigerian Army Resource Center, is expected to reshape the orientation of officers in such a manner that missions are well understood. To know by right, by your training, by your status, that I need to do this. While the Nigerian Army is expanding the scope of the leadership training across the country, there is a new sense of belief from officers that Michael Balale, NT News. And that's a contribution from Lagos Nationwide continues with Felicia in Jaws after this break. But do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live. We'll be right back to stay with us. Elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime, and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement. Terrorism, fake news, hate speech, religious bigotry, and any act that tends to divide us as a nation. Watch out for strange gatherings and suspicious movements. Restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbor. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. They resort to kidnapping, killings for rituals, and other heinous crimes. Avoid wrong use of the social media before you broadcast that false message. Think twice. Ask whether it will promote peace or violence. For safety at home, still be security conscious. Educate your household on safety tips. Report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you. Be a good citizen. Be patriotic. To pass security information, please call 0813-222-2105-0915-339-1309-0908-837-3514 or send a mail to DSSPR at dss.gov.ng This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with Havel Corporate Concept, presents Beyond the Debate, a series for all the 18 presidential candidates in the 2023 general elections to present their manifestos and visions to the Nigerian public as a social contract. Beyond the Debate 
will broadcast live on the network service of the NTA and stream on YouTube and other social media platforms beginning from 10th November 2022. The publicly signed manifestos by the candidates will be uploaded on this portal www.summitofpoliticalparties.org. For further inquiries, please contact Dr. Padanga 0803317 Hawa 0803317 you are still watching nationwide on the network service of the nta welcome to just Hundreds of people in the central zone of Plateau State are benefiting from a free eye care program supervised by consultants from the Jazz University Teaching Hospital. Caleb Kuchin has details. This crowd at a facility like this is not a regular one, as those assembled here have come with great expectations following the opportunity given them by this organization to have their eye, this all-important organ, checked. From the registration to the point of consultancy and treatment, the team is up and doing to ensure that each person is attended to promptly, with beneficiaries describing the gesture as overwhelming. Everything that affects the eyes affects the body. So my suggestion is to get a brighter sight after receiving the medicine. Well, in fact, we are very happy. Okay. When we see people now can recognize somebody this time. Okay. Before, I would, I would like, only see human being like a, like a spirit only. How are the medical personnel coping with such a huge task? Everything is well coordinated. We can always be coming back for checkups. We have a special instrument that we come with that screens everybody for glaucoma. But after the consultation, some go for glasses, some go for drugs. Another has come for surgeries. We have observed that in two of the local government, the eye problem is the major problem of our people. So because of that, they see that is the need to meet the demand, especially that concerns the health of our citizens. Over 200 cataract surgeries and others are expected to be carried out. Glaucoma patients screened with about 200 reading glasses to be given free. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, NTN News. A team of experts from the West African Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Science has carried out assessment tour of facilities at the Federal School of Medical Laboratory Technology Science, Jaws, for accreditation of some programs. Nguyen Yang and Deava Yang reports. Established in 1954 in Lagos, and relocated to Joss in 1978, the Federal School of Medical Laboratory Technology is mandated to train and retrain medical laboratory professionals and research in the country. The institution, which is under the direct supervision of the Federal Ministry of Health, is witnessing tremendous human capital, infrastructural, and legal framework changes. Management of the Federal School of Medical Laboratory Technology is seeking approval for the institution to train postgraduate fellowship of medical laboratory scientists within the West African sub-region. We are equipped in terms of human resource, in terms of infrastructure, and then the means of sustenance is also there. This request necessitated the visit by the accreditation team from the West African Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Science to assess the facilities in health institutions in JAWS. Uh, we are very impressed so far we believe uh, the basic facilities uh, to support the minimum training uh, look feasible. And then, uh, even though this is not the final authority, but we, we, have, we believe that we can uh, carry a positive feedback. Management of the Federal School of Medical Laboratory Technology is looking forward for the domiciliation of the college for training of clinical chemistry, hematology, and blood transfusion science, among others. Angels, Indian, and the other gang, continues. That's our contribution from Joss. Let's rejoin Najatu in Abuja. Najatu, over to you. Thank you, Felicia. 
Welcome back to our Abuja studios. We're starting with civil service matters. An efficient and effective service delivery in the federal civil service has for long been constrained by many problems associated with corruption, as contained in the head of the civil service of the Federation for Lasha D. Yemiason's message to the opening of a one-day anti-corruption and transparency unit sensitization program for the directorate officers grade level 15 to 17 in the office of the head of the civil service of the federation hamman japani reports the training is part of efforts to drive awareness and identify existing gaps in the anti-corruption initiatives that have been put in place by the present administration it is also to sensitize public officers on the need to promote transparency discipline and accountability in the service head of the civil service of the federation for lashade yemiason represented said it has become imperative to make deliberate efforts to address the menace of corruption that has continued to portray nigeria in a bad light and that the federal government through the office of the head of service had considered and approved the request of the independent corrupt practices and other related offenses commission on the establishment of anti-corruption and transparency unit in all ministries extra ministerial departments and agencies the office of the head of civil service will ensure compliance of other MDs with the directives to establish and strengthen the anti-corruption and transparent units toward redeeming the image of the service toward achieving sustainable development. NCPC chairman who was represented said the mandate of anti-corruption and transparency unit is to review on periodic basis the system, procedures and operations of stakeholders urge civil servants to be agent of change in the discharge of their duties and be good ambassadors of the service. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. Similarly, the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy is taking stock of its activities, itemizing areas of success and noting areas of strengthening efforts as it drives the nation's digital transformation. Chimdim Maundubisi reports that this is as the third edition of Digital Nigeria Day kickstarts. 18.44% contribution to the nation's GDP in the second quarter of 2022 remittance of 594 billion naira as against 51 billion in 2019 is a great step forward assessment obtained at the just concluded ministerial retreat showing scorecard of above excellent marks in eight key areas of mandate including 4g network nationwide deployment broadband penetration among others launches the nation as high ranking at the global scene look at the 5g we did Two option we were able to deliver per spectrum 273 million USD instead of 70 million USD. We increased the database from less than 40 in 15 years to more than 90 million of recent Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the best university in the world, sent an email to us. They want to engage us to learn from what we have been doing in Nigeria. This is the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economist story since its redesignation three years ago as it starts to mark Digital Nigeria Day 2022 on Tuesday. So this year's event is going to be hybrid. We have a Digital Nigeria Conference app which you can download and follow all events online. It's a celebration of milestones reached and an avenue to map out strategies for sustaining the momentum and attain greater digital heights. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndivisi, NTA News. And still on Tech Matters, the Nigerian Communications Commission and cybersecurity experts are educating Nigerians on the gains of embracing emerging technologies which are creating global economic opportunities while maintaining a secure cyberspace. Again, Kim Dema Undubisi reports. Fourth Industrial Revolution ongoing. Everyone seems on a journey to fifth generation. The digital era has come to the rescue. New technologies such as blockchain and metaverse are redefining contents, economic transactions, and commerce. The three now means that you can produce and even own. On my Twitter, I can post something, and if somebody likes it, the person can donate to me. 
So for focus watching on Twitter, I can find any money. So that's the era we are going. You don't have to break more of these days to end. It's just a political party. 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 And I think there was a financial problem. World power transformation and innovation. While some people have become key players, others are reluctant to embrace creations on these spaces as a result of insecurities caused by nefarious activities of actors. Discussions here are to enlighten users of such platforms on how to protect their spaces and carry out secure dealings. There's a serious cyber warfare going on, fighting against terror financing, and you want to cut away the funding of uh, terrorism, then you have to understand how you can mitigate, you know, those transactions to illicit wallets, to illicit individuals, or if by any means it goes to them, or how you can investigate and stop them from spending it globally. Experts say Nigeria's adoption of digital technologies has enabled diversification of the economy and created more jobs. In Abuja, Chimdema GBC, NTA News. Now it's time to join our Enugu Network Center, where Nina is standing by. Hello, Nina. Hello, Welcome to Enugu Network Center. 29 mediators of the 2021-2022 Skills Training Class have been enrolled into the panel of neutrals of the Enugu State multi Dual Court House. The Chief Judge of Enugu State Justice of Zemina charged the newly inductees to shun mediocrity and embrace integrity and probity, which are indisputable hallmarks of the profession. Kenichi Ochiara reports that the ceremony was held at Justice of Mesoliki Auditorium, Enugu State Judiciary. <laughs> The Enugu State multi Dog Court House Mediation Skills Certification Training Program is a platform on which the panel of mediators is built since the year 2019. Enugu State Chief Judge, represented by Justice Arrow Odugu, said it becomes imperative as the traditional court system is encountering difficulties coping with the growing demands for effective dispute resolution models. <laughs> A senior advocate of Nigeria, as well as the vice chairman, Enugu State Multi Dog Court House, ESMDC Neutral Screening and Selection Committee, who represented the chairman, reminded the new mediators that their training and mentorship is the first step of the ladder on their field of endeavors. While taking the roll call of the inductees, a member ESMDC Neutral Screening and Selection Committee, Justice C.C. Annie, advised the new inductees to abide by the laid-down rules and protocols for international best practices. <laughs> Certificates of participation and recognition were presented to the fresh mediators in Enugu, Kelechi Ochiara, NTA News. With eight months as a strike called off, some public universities have slated exams to commence in a week interval from resumption. Chimaro Keugo Investor Board examines the implications of resuming school and writing exams one week after on the students. As his decision to call off the strike was sequel to the meeting between the leadership of the union and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, who called several meetings to intervene between ASU and the Nigerian government. The eight months industrial action, no doubt, have apparently caused a total change in the syllabic calendar. It is against this backdrop that some public universities, upon resumption, passed a circular for immediate commencement of examination in a week interval after revisions. According to a lecturer at the University of Nigeria in Ugo campus, the adjustment was to enable the educational system that have been affected to meet up with the original syllabic arrangement for the year, stressing that students will be properly reminded of what they have been taught before the strike action. We, we expect that we can 
if you some of our students are doing students, if you go up, you'll see them doing their students. So, uh, we have resumed. Our lectures will start on Monday. In honest, with this lecture, we'll go on for maybe seven to ten days. After that, we'll give one week for revision. And after the revision, the exam. Then around the same April, we will start with 20, 21, 22 sessions. For the students, their duty was to buckle up and channel their energy on reading well, which will enable them to sit and do well in the examinations. For us, uh, according to some of my friends that are in final year, they say they are happy, at least they can buckle up and write the exam. At least the things is only about project defense, writing final professional. Then, but the, the people are very, very the people that I'm targeting is the other other level, the fourth year, the third year, and the second year. I'm not happy about that because all of them they have a lot of work to do. I don't think they can cope within the limited time for the exam. We did it, and we still do it again this time around. So, um, majority of the students are very very happy that we are going to start exam very soon, especially those of us in primary year. We are tired. We just want to graduate anyhow. The students, however, pleaded with ASU and the federal government to provide a lasting solution to the industrial action hindering the educational progress of the country. In Enugu, Chimaroke Ugu, NTA News. And that's a bit from here. Remember, you can follow this news live online on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. Our Facebook page is at NTA News Network. And our YouTube channel at NTA Live. We'll take another break here nationwide. We'll continue with Abubakar Musa in Maduguri after this break. It's, uh, it's life. Once you lose hope, you lose life. Once people get lifted to a certain level, they start feeling godlike. What would you attribute this backwardness in education to even up to date? I think the lie is what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. wrong. And the program is in reflection. The Nigerian electoral system is seemingly simple, yet may be complicated for some. It's for them to come and tell us what they have running an election. It's equivalent to what? A job application. I want them to identify the issues that be plaguing the common Nigerians. PDP should focus on PDP and APC should focus on APC. Let's show you what an election is all about as Nigerians pick the next president, governors and legislators. We interrogate their plans, question the rationale and review the prospects. Join us, the parlor. A new edition of TV Guide is out, featuring an impeccable personality with purposeful leadership, Al Haji Mohammed Mitakobi, the Executive National President of Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria. If 574 local governments will be able to put all our structures in everywhere, I'll be able to bring the regions members together to reconcile them to come and work for the progress of the association. Welcome to a world of fun and excitement as we also present an assemblage of professionals in the media space. Some compelling NTA programs, current trends in the fashion world, ICT, sports, entertainment, and lots more. Get a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us on Nationwide up to this moment. Let's begin with a cherry news from here. 
University of Meduguri is set for resumption of students tomorrow after eight months of industrial strike action by members of Academic Staff Union of Universities and their non-academic sister labor movements. Yagum Subuka reports that preparations are in top gear as students are expected on campus for the completion of the 2020-2021 academic session. University of Meduguri, like every other federal and most state universities across the country, were closed early this year following ASU strike and later NASU and SANU joined paralyzing all activities on campus. University of Meduguri is now ready to resume for second semester 2020-2021 academic session on Wednesday, 26th of October, with students and the entire academic community warming up for full services. The Vice Chancellor, University of Meduguri, Professor Ali Ushigaba, says, although they are bereft of funds, every possible major is being exploited to get all components of the institution working. The university does not have funds at the moment. Our IGR sources have depleted. It will not be out of place to request the government to give us some, some kind of bailout to the universities. In preparation to reopening of the institution, NTA News observed that clearance and fumigation of the premises, among other activities, were ongoing in order to make the citadel of learning habitable for students. Um, I just come to school just to prepare for the resumption, which will be as soon as possible. A slow abiding union, according to ASU chairman, University of Medjugorje, Dr. Abubakar Michelia, they decided to suspend the strike based on court order, even though their demands are yet to be met. It is our hope that our colleagues, our members, will be able to go to class and teach the government does its own part. Resumption of academic activities after eight months of strike action by members of ASU across the country is not only a sigh of relief for parents and students, but also an opportunity for lecturers to get back to business. In Meijuguri, Yagum Supukar, NTA News. Very well, Yagum. So, and away from that now, to tell you that as part of efforts towards providing quality healthcare services in Borno, 60 newly engaged midwives and nurses are receiving training to understand the structure, system, and services of primary healthcare to the citizenry. Organized by National Primary Healthcare Development Agency in collaboration with the Borno State Primary Healthcare Development Agency and other partners, the training will last for five days. Morjana Hassan will now bring us the rest of the story. The training for the midwives and nurses was aimed at improving their knowledge on healthcare service delivery. Acting Executive Director of Borno State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Dr. Lawi Auta, commended the efforts of the state governor, Professor Babagana Umarazulu, for the huge investment in the health sector and called on the participants to put in their best towards the well being of the people. He is a governor that 1 a.m., 2 a.m., he visits health facilities to see whether staff are working, they are saving lives or not. Focal person from National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Bashim Nuri D. State, the recruitment was based on the directives of Federal Minister of Health with special interest on Borno due to the long decade of insurgency that ravaged the health sector. So I just urge the, the participant to please pay attention. Other health professionals from both federal and state ministries of health lauded government for the recruitment and training of the health personnel as it will go a long way in providing quality health care services in the state. In Meduguri, Mujana Tuhasan, NTA News. And those are the latest stories at this time from Meduguri. I believe Najatu in Abuja is ready to continue from there. Yes, Abu Bakr, if my veil behaves, I will be ready. Yes, I'm ready now. Thank you for rejoining us in Abuja. Now, the wife of the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate, Senator Olure Tinubu, has donated food and non-food items to the Benue state government for distribution to the flood victims in the state. Senator Tinubu, who sympathized with the victims, gave assurance of government's resolve to proffer a lasting solution to the challenge. Moses Ode reports. Of the APC presidential candidate was received by the wife of the Benue State Governor, Eunice Otong, and other government functionaries at the Presidential Lodge 
of the Bemri people's house, Makudi. Addressing the gathering, Senator Tinibu decried the effect of flood disaster across the country and especially Bemri state, which has negatively affected the people, leading to displacement of millions of persons. This and many more are part of the reasons for her visit to the state. We came in here to give whatever we have to help our brothers and sisters that are in one distress or the other. She further appealed to well-spirited individuals and non-governmental organizations to support victims of flood and other disasters across the nation. Dr. Eunice Otong commended the wife of the presidential candidate of the APC for her visit and assured of even distribution of the palliative to the affected victims. Uh, for her having the mind and the concern to send relief materials to our people is something we are not taking for granted. We have committed to a peaceful coexistence. The challenges we have in our country today will require all of us. The food and non-food items and cash donations were formally presented to the Brimley State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, for onward distribution to victims. Before her departure, Senator Oluwemi Tinibu was hosted by the state chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and party supporters, where she made an additional cash donation of 10 million naira and other items. In Makudi, Moses Ode, NTN. Justice Aminu Garuba of the Federal High Court sitting in Mina has reserved for another date on the judgment on the pre-election matter of Haruna Arfat Magaji challenging the qualification of Abubakar Ladu into the various stages of contest for Suleja Orara Tafab Federal Constituency. Justice Aminu Garuba says the court will communicate to the parties on the judgment day. Mokhtar Wu reports. A hearing of the plaintiff's originating summons. Counsel to the first and second defendants, Abubakar Ladu and APC respectively, challenged the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the case of the plaintiff, Haruna Arafat Magaji. The defense counsel argued that even though appeal court removed Abubakar Ladu from the Nader State House of Assembly as a member representing Suleja in 2007, another appeal court judgment in 2015 corrected the earlier verdict. In response to the defense preliminary objections, the plaintiff's lead counsel, Mahmoud Abubakar Magaji, SAN, submitted that Abubakar Ladu tendered a forged document to the INEC and lied on INEC from EC9 that he had never submitted a forged document. On urging the court to dismiss the defendant's preliminary objection, the plaintiff's counsel asked the court to disqualify Abu Bakr Lado. The judgment of December 2015 did not ventilate on all of the issues that were raised in 2007. It did not expressly set aside the judgment of 2007. You can still put the document and still be eligible to participate in the election. What disqualifies you is that when you forge and you go ahead to submit that forged document to the INEC. Meanwhile, on this substantive case, parties adopted their processes before the court. This is Amino Garba thereafter adjourned the case to a date to be communicated to the parties for judgment. In Mina Mukhtar or NTA News. Now, the Director General of the People's Democratic Party Campaign Management Committee for the 2023 elections in Sokoto State, former Minister Yusuf Suleiman, has expressed optimism that the party will emerge victorious at the polls. al Hato Abdullahi reports that the assurance was given at the inauguration of the Campaign Council in Sokoto State. The Sokoto State PDP Campaign Council is headed by former Governor Tairu Elatu Bafrawa to be deputized by the party's standard bearer Said Umar Obandoma. The State Campaign Management Committee is chaired by former Minister Yusuf Suleiman with Deputy Directors on Publicity, Operations, Election Management, Research and Strategy, Finance, Volunteer Groups, Security, Religious Matters, as well as documentation and reporting. Zonal campaign committees were also formed with Dr. Abdullah Balarbi Salami as coordinator Sokoto East, Senator Ahmad Mohamed Machado, Sokoto North, and Ibrahim Milgoma 
is to coordinate Talk to Southern Dawn. Federal constituencies, local governments, and awards level campaign committees have also been set up. Inaugurating the campaign council, the state PDP chairman, Bella Ali Ugorenyo, appealed for maximum support to the leadership of the campaign council and the subcommittees from the PDP family. The DG Campaign Management Committee, former Minister Yusuf Suleiman, pledged to work hard to take the party to victory. With Allah's support, with Allah's guidance, Sokoto State will reassure itself as the home base of PDP in Nigeria. Governor Amin Azere Tambol believed that seeking people's mandate should be considered as the business of those who can mobilize support for the party to emerge victorious, saying vote seeking is an inclusive endeavor. There is a need for us to come out in mass and vote for PDP so that we can reposition, rescue and rebuild Nigeria. Together. Tambol was emphatic that PDP supporters should engage in violent free campaign throughout the 2023 electoral processes. The Sakwatu Malatu Abdullahi, NTA News. Now, well, the sixth edition of the Voice of Women 2020 conference has been held with special recognition of women with outstanding contributions to the growth and development of the nation. With the theme Towards Rebuilding Nigeria, the conference is geared at setting an agenda for an inclusive and accountable society. The platform is also to provide presidential candidates a means of interacting with Nigerians on how best they intend to put the country on the right trajectory. The conference also honors achievers of the women folk, including Fatima Buba of the Nigerian Television Authority, leading the discussion on top national issues. And up next is Sports Update. Nigeria's under-17 women's football team, the Flamingos, will on Wednesday take on Colombia in one of the semi-final fixtures of the ongoing FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup in India. The Flamingos beat USA on penalties to get to the semi-finals for the first time.